to, to start, could you tell us about The Girl in the Woods and your character in the series? Um, you know, Girl in the Woods is, is a fun ride of kind of, uh, it's this, uh, the unlikely group of monster slayers going after the monster. Um, and that's kind of, you know, if, if I had to caps, encapsulate it in a quick sentence, that would be it. Because it's just one of those fun, I rarely get to do a fun show. It's always either really dark or, you know, very wordy or like this is just pure fun. Um, and it obviously includes a lot of things that are woven in organically, you know, dealing with inclusion and diversity and LGBTQ, like, you know, it's really, it's really cool to see it, uh, to have a story told uh, where we are historically used to having all these characters live as side characters or characters who live on the edge of the frame be pushed right to the center of the frame. Um, yeah, you got monsters and you got, you got a bunch of, uh, you know, cool teenagers chasing after them. And I play a character named Arthur Dean and Arthur Dean is kind of this, he's like the head warrior of this colony who's in this world is monsters are real. And he's one of the protectorates of, of letting the monsters out. Um, and he has a relationship with uh, the lead character, Carrie, who, um, who it goes on this journey. And it's partially, in terms of my character, it's partially a story about our relationship um, in terms of, you know, two characters that are kind of broken in, on the inside and finding each other and trying to make some sense of the world. You've done it all throughout your career. What was it about this particular project and script and character that stood out to you? Um, I think for me, it was the humor. Uh, I, I saw the short with Cal Penn and I thought this had a lot of potential. You know, you have, just having done a lot of shorts, you, you know, you know that most shorts have certain, rest, you know, restrictions, whether it's budget or geography. Um, but when I saw it, I go, this is fun. This has a lot of, you know, a lot of potential. And then I read the scripts and the scripts were just funny. They were just like, yes, it's, you know, there's like, there's like the monster side of it and the the, the thriller aspect of the show. But, you know, the banter between, you know, our three lead characters, you know, it, it kind of like, it, it was just, it, it, it didn't feel like a 55 year old man from Glendale wrote the dialogue for teenagers, you know, it mm -hmm. felt really hip and present. Um, so that was what drew me the most, you know, to do the show. And then it was Kristen Ritter. I had jumped on a zoom with her and we were talking about possibly doing the show together. And I, I mean, 10 minutes into the Zoom call, I, I was I was in. She's just so much energy. She has so much passion for anything she does um, that I was in. And, and, and thank God, like once I got on set, you know, there's nothing like when you hear a director yell cut and go, that's, that's effing dope or that's sick. Like you feel safe and protected and you're like, all right, let's go to work. Like you were saying earlier, you know, Arthur and Carrie have this really interesting dynamic uh, within the series where they're, they've gone from allies to kind of enemies. How did you and Stephanie approach the dynamic between your two characters? You know, it's, it's, it's interesting because we shot them sequentially. So we got to play it out almost in real time. The shoot happened really fast. Um, I think there were five day shoots per episode. Um, so it, it kind of played out on camera in a weird way. Mm -hmm. And I just knew for my, you know, like the thing that anchors my relationship with Carrie is love. And as, as hard of a character as he is, and as this kind of persona he carries, you know, he's doing it, you know, it's kind of like the cliche things, the cliche thing that uh, actors say, but essentially it was love. Like I was, I was protecting in my head, protecting the one person that I love, you know, unfortunately I get put on an interesting mission by my senior to, uh, that has conflict with that. Like you were saying earlier, so Kristen Ritter serves as executive producer. She also directed the first four episodes. Mm. So I collaborated with her to bring this story to life. And is it a different experience when you're working with a director who also acts? Um, it's always a different experience when you work with a director who acts, um, you know, purely because they understand that sometimes, I mean, it's not all the time, but sometimes you can say less when giving notes to an actor 
because we are speaking the same language and she's she's probably approaching giving notes to me as if she was in my position you know being on camera so i love that i, I love how shorthand it becomes in terms of notes and that's what i've usually found with with directors who were actors or who are actors throughout your, your career you've championed more diverse and inclusive storytelling and projects like the girl in the woods push that movement forward how did you discover your voice as an advocate and have you felt that shift in the industry um you know it's been a long road i mean i started in 1997 and you know it, it i would say 70 probably 75 to 85 percent of my career you get you get stuck in a bubble you know i always say as an asian american actor you we had for the longest time five to six roles a year to audition for that that was substantial enough to put money on money on the table so that you could eat and turn on your lights and and just enough to food you know to have food and not you know get a second job um so you know, imagine there's hundreds and thousands of actors who are competing for those spots and unfortunately those spots lived in two worlds which was either the gangster or the technician um and so we cut to even if you know up until a few years ago that things are starting to the needle is moving slowly and and shows like this you know it shows shows us exactly where we are right now it's like as long as the things that we're fighting for are ingrained into the story as opposed to being about the story like you know when i jokingly say that i've been in every Ch csi law and order you know you name it chinatown episode like i mean i truly mean it i've been in every one of those because they were Asian specific episodes, like some crime happened in Chinatown or, and now what I find with shows like Girl in the Woods or even The Good Doctor, like, mm -hmm. you know, there, we get to live in the world as just people and we just happen to be Asian. And that I feel like is progress slowly starting to happen. Yeah, what advice would you give the next generation of storytellers that are coming up um, that you've learned throughout your career? It, it would, I, I, there's the, the new voices that are coming out are, are so much more talented than I am. So I wouldn't say, I wouldn't necessarily give them advice. It would be for the generation that is thinking about entering the business as writers, as, you know, executives, like we, especially Asian Americans, you know, like our general, like my parents' generation, like we were either going to be doctors or lawyers, like, you know, we were stuck in this category and we were too scared to say, dad, mom, I want to go to performing arts school. I want to be an actor. I want to be a singer. I want to be an artist. Um, so that would be my only piece of advice is to put your hands over your ears, close your eyes and move forward. Speaking of inclusive and diverse storytelling, there's so many timely themes within this series. Was there one in particular that hit home for you? The magic of keeping it invisible about the, like the, the idea of gender identity, mm -hmm. like keeping it invisible in the sense of like the story wasn't about that. The story is about chasing monsters, you know, and it's about protecting the world. And to be able to just make you feel like we're actually in the world we live in and not the story is not focused on about all these political issues or social issues. It's just ingrained in the stories in a fun way. You know, it's like, you know, there's so many scenes where I think about like, you know, one of Misha is like putting on these pink Ray-Bans and he's like, you know, there's this fun music playing. Like, it's just the way everything was incorporated. I think to me is, is, was the most special part of doing the show. Like you, you know, I, I can't emphasize it enough. It's like once it's normalized, then we've actually moved forward. Yeah, is there a, a scene in particular that you're really excited for your fans to see? There's a fight scene. <laughs> I haven't, you know, I haven't done a fight scene in like, since Alter Car I think Alter Carbon was canceled like a year ago, maybe, maybe a little bit more. So I haven't done a fight scene in, in, in so long. So this was, this was my first fight scene um, in a while. And if I have a fight scene with, with one of the main characters, I'll leave it at that. <laughs> Uh, and then in addition to The Girl in the Woods, you are also starring in The Good Doctor and season five is airing now. What can you tease about what's ahead for your character? Um, I think he, you know, we never really know. Um, we get the scripts like uh, maybe two weeks in advance. Um, but my relationship with, with uh, Fiona Gubelman's character grows. My relationship with, with uh, Freddie Highmore's character grows. Um, 
And, you know, I, I, I get to work on a few more cases and I'm, I've actually moved up in the world a little bit. So I'm doing more, more of my own surgeries. Yeah. Uh, and I just have a couple of questions about you as a storyteller. How did you discover yeah. your passion for storytelling? You know, it's honestly, it's the new generation of Asian American filmmakers and, and writers that are coming out. When I saw Justin Chan's movies, like, I was so inspired. I was like, wow, this is amazing. Like, that this indie movement that we, that I knew in like the 90s and 2000s, like, is coming back in, in a very beautiful and poignant way. Um, and I always wanted to tell stories that were slightly different. And so I started a company called Soul Street. And, you know, we, we, we are focusing on, on finding these gems of writers. And that sometimes they're really, like, we're having hard times, like, going through the normal routes of just finding young Asian American writers. You know, it's, 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 it's an interesting time to be in because all I want to do is meet as many writers as I can mm -hmm. um, for different things that we're putting together. Um, and I'm proud of the stuff that we've, we've you know, we, we have a show now um, based, based in Hawaii. Um, it's a true crime story in Hawaii that will celebrate a lot of the things that haven't been celebrated about, you know, the Hawaiian culture um, and get to do it in a fun way. Um, and there's a story we're doing with Kevin Hart's company called Lions in the Garden. That's about the true story about my family and the first, you know, one of the first all African American fight teams. And, you know, we have a couple more. And so um, it's just an exciting period. I don't, I don't know what is, you know, from your question, I don't know what, what would be the one thing. It would just be the accumulation of watching all these guys who are from the next generation, like ahead of me, like surpassing surpassing all our wildest like dreams like crazy rich asian snake eyes you know shang chi like it's it's pretty cool to see um, you've had a lot of success throughout your career when you look back is there a particular moment that that stands out to you uh i would i would say one of the most like moments of like wow this is the crazy world i i was brave enough to come you know to not listen to my parents essentially, and to to leave a very um, safe career um, was when I was shot Die Another Day and I was in England at the red carpet and I couldn't believe like the queen, the queen was there and it was such a grand experience. And then, and then you come back to reality and it's nothing, you know, our, our struggles, you know, people who live on the outside in the film business, you know, trying to, trying to make a living you know it's a long journey but it's such a long-winded answer to your question it is it's now you know because I'm able to actually mm. you know be in a place I'm able to you know take care of my family they will turn on the lights I, you know it's everything that I dreamed of and I and I still go to set and I go to the crafty in the morning to get my you know coffee I still can't believe at 5 a.m. I'm looking out and I'm, that I get to do this. So I don't know if it's one moment.